This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to check the refrigerant charge on an air conditioner or a heat pump during low outdoor ambient temperatures. And so we can replicate a higher temperature day by restricting the airflow on the top of the unit in order to drive up the pressure to correctly check the refrigerant charge. I'm going to show you how to do that coming up. Before checking the refrigerant charge, you normally want to make sure that the outdoor temperature is above 70 degrees and the indoor temperature is above 70 degrees. We know our outdoor temperature is actually at 56 degrees right now. And what we did is we drove the temperature up inside the building up to 73 degrees in order to have a heat load inside the building. As you can see, we have our temperature rose to above 70 degrees, so it's presently 73 in the building. As well, you want to make sure to check your indoor airflow. So you want to check your filter, make sure it's not clogged, and make sure that you have good airflow inside the building. And before we check the refrigerant charge with this method, we need to confirm that the indoor unit is equipped with a thermostatic expansion valve. And you can see down there, we do have one. Oftentimes, it's posted on the rating plate if it does have a thermostatic expansion valve. Then you want to choose between either test probes or a gauge set with hoses. In this case, we're just going to use the test gauges because it's it's real easy to just connect in and measure our pressures. So in this case, we're going to be using our quick connect test gauge uh, connected to a valve cord depressing tool. And so this makes it real easy to connect right in here. So I don't have to be in a rush about it at all. Uh, so there's no refrigerant that's going to be going to be leaking right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and snug this on. And then what's going to happen is I just use this little thumb screw in order to get my pressure. So as you can see, it's pushed in on the, the valve core, and now I'm reading my pressure. So over here, you could attach either a digital gauge or a compound gauge. In this case, we're just using our compound gauges. And now we're going to turn this system on in air conditioning mode and we're going to have to monitor our high side pressure while the system runs and adjust our outdoor airflow. So now that we have the system on, I just want to point out that we do have R22 in this system, but the process is going to be basically exactly the same for R410A, except for the fact that we're using our, our taking our pressure and we're bringing it into the green inner ring for R22 we will be bringing it into the pink inner ring for r 4 a And so we need to wait just a few minutes in order for uh, pressures to kind of stabilize a little bit. But basically what's gonna happen here is we need to make sure that our high side pressure is high enough in order to check the charge. Now we have this set on T1 and T1's measuring the vapor line, so let's move this. So, T2 is on our liquid line. So you always have your red gauge hooked to your small liquid line, and then you have your, your blue gauge on your large vapor line. So once again, we are in air conditioning mode now, and we need to make sure that our saturated temperature on this high side gauge is between, say, 90 and 105 degrees is a saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil. And so we just take our pressure and we convert it to our R22 saturated temperature right here or using a PT chart or an app. And you can see right now it's only at 73 degrees as our R22 saturated temperature. So we're gonna wait just a few minutes, let this stabilize a little bit, and we need to restrict the outdoor airflow. Uh, as you can see down here, our saturated temperature is very low. It's actually right at 32 degrees. So we take our pressure, and we convert that to our R22 saturated temperature. So we got, say, right about 50E, if you're looking at it straight on, about 58 PSI. Bring that in, we're at about 33 degrees right now for R22. That's the temperature in the middle of the indoor coil. So you can see this, this saturated temperature is rising. We're at about 77 degrees R22 sat temp and it is rising we need to give it a little bit of time now over on the rating plate on this outdoor unit is calling for a sub cooling of about 10 degrees so sub cooling is the saturated temperature minus the line temperature so if we were to check sub cooling right now 
you'd see we have about 79 degree saturated temperature and 76 degree line temp. So you take 79 minus 76 and you'd have three degrees of subcooling. Now, if that was our actual subcooling, uh, after like say five minutes of runtime, uh, that would mean that the system is a little bit low on refrigerant. But what we need to do, once again, we have to restrict our airflow uh, to get our saturated temperature up higher. We also want to do this in a kind of a semi-quick manner because we're going to lose our heat load inside the building by running our air conditioner during the winter time. So let's take a look at our plywood up on the top of this unit. So I've restricted the airflow a little bit more in order to drive up the high side pressure and the high side sat temperature. So we need to get it up a considerable amount higher and so if it was a higher temperature outside uh, then we would have a higher pressure and so we're restricting the heat exchange at the outdoor unit. You got to remember that the, the outdoor unit is rejecting heat to the air outside. So if it is low temperature air, it's going to be extremely effective at rejecting the heat. And we don't want it to be that effective because we're trying to replicate a warmer day outside where it would have a harder time rejecting that heat. So you can see that we're approaching our 90 degree saturated temperature. So that's, that's good. Um, we need to wait till this stabilizes between 90 and 105 degrees as our R22 green inner ring saturated temperature. I will tell you that on the rating plate, the design subcooling or the target subcooling, if it's 10 degrees, what that is, is that's the average design subcooling. And so on a hotter day, your actual running subcooling may be higher. It may be, say, 12 degrees or 13 degrees. When it's lower temperature outside, the actual running subcooling may be, say, 8 degrees. And so you got to keep that in mind. That's just the average. Some manufacturers give you, say, three uh, target subcoolings. Some may only give you one. Uh, so you just got to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's just check the, the subcooling, the running subcooling right now. And we have our pressure on the outer ring. We bring that into the saturated temperature for R22, and that's 94 degrees. So 94 minus 90 and we have four degrees of subcooling. Now, let's just check our uh, total superheat as well. I'm just kind of curious because we have a thermostatic expansion valve. I want to see how good of a job that that is doing. And so we're going to change this to T1. We're going to move this down and kind of align it right here. Now, total superheat is the line temperature on the large vapor line minus the saturated temperature found on the gauge. And so you can see the saturated temperature is about uh, 42 degrees. So we bring our, our pressure in at 71 PSI, bring it into the green inner ring, and we have about, right now, 42 degrees. So we'll just call this uh, 62 minus 42. We have about 20 degrees of total superheat. So it's a little high. Uh, so if anything, you know, it, it may be maybe 19 degrees as a, as a total superheat right now. The TXV is doing its job, uh, so, so that's good. Let's just come back up here. So you gotta remember that superheat, to check the superheat, it's the line temp minus the sat temp on the blue gauge, but for subcooling, it's the sat temp minus the line temp. So, so that is different. So on T2, you can see right now, because we gave the system a chance to run for a little bit, our running subcooling is at a higher amount right now. So it's actually about 97 degrees, 97 minus 87, we have about 10 degrees of subcooling. You always gotta remember that you need to have the system running for about, say, five to 10 minutes uh, before checking the refrigerant charge when you have a thermostatic expansion valve. It's very important. So 90 to 105 degrees for our R22 saturated temperature. If we had R4 tonight, we'd be over here. 90 to 105, we'd be over here. And so that's, that's the only difference. You, your temperature meter would be the same. Your needle would just be over here between these saturated temperatures. So anyway, uh, we have 90, 97, uh, 97 degrees minus 
86 and we have 11 degrees of subcoin. So we compare that to our uh, target subcoin posted on the reading plate and we have one degree higher of subcoin than what we're supposed to have. So we're just slightly overcharged. I'm going to give this a little bit more time to run. You can see our uh, saturated temperature is up a little higher now. Our subcoin is still increasing. I want to kind of wait until I see that, that subcoin stabilize. Right now we have 99 degrees, 99 minus 86, and that shows 13 degrees of running actual subcoin. Let's check our total superheat again. And so to do that, we're just going to move this down here. And our line temp is 61 degrees, and our saturated temperature is 41 degrees. So 61 minus 41, we still have 20 degrees of total superheat. So the, the job of the thermostatic expansion valve at the indoor coil is to control that superheat. And so it typically is gonna have anywhere from like eight to say 14 degrees of superheat. We are a little high on our superheat right now. But it is functioning. So it's starting to look like this system is uh, a bit overcharged because our saturated temperature is at 100 degrees in the, inner, uh, in the inner coil of the outdoor unit. So 100 degrees minus 83, and we have 17 degrees of subcooling. We, we're overcharged on this unit. In order to uh, recover a little bit of refrigerant out of this system, uh, we could connect a, a line to this port right here to the recovery, uh, to the recovery bottle and we can charge just a little bit into the recovery bottle at a time. Basically, you're, you're pulling it from the high side into the recovery bottle, and you do that just a couple ounces at a time, and you can't adjust the charge too much that way because you would be removing oil from the system. You gotta remember that the refrigerant and the refrigerant oil travel together, especially on this liquid line right here. But that's how you could adjust the charge. You could just decharge it a little at a time by recovering refrigerant from the high pressure side into the recovery bottle because the high side pressure is going to be higher than the pressure within the bottle and so it would naturally flow from here into the bottle. It looks like our subcooling has not increased anymore at least you know it's a hundred hundred degree saturated temperature and 83 over here so we still are at 17 degrees so it looks like we're seven degrees of subcooling overcharged and the problem with that is, it's just gonna be more of the electrical efficiency. You know, our high side pressure is gonna be a little high, so it's gonna cost a little bit more electricity in order to run, but our thermostatic expansion valve at the indoor coil is gonna make sure that even though we're slightly overcharged, we're still gonna be functioning and absorbing heat at the indoor coil in order to reject it at the outdoor coil. So right now, 101 degrees minus 84, we're fully stabilized right now. So that's how you do it. You just measure your, your subcooling and the process is exactly the same whether you have R4 tonight or R22 and you just use the green inner ring for R22 and the pink inner ring for R4 tonight. I just wanna show you how to disconnect using this tool. It's really simple. All you have to do is back this up and basically it's no longer pressing in on that Schrader valve. It's also known as a valve core. And then all you have to do is just undo this right here And that's it. We'll do the same thing for this high side. Uh, and if you want to reduce the pressure before even disconnecting, you can turn the system off and let it equalize first. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and back this up. And that's it. So then I'll just go ahead and leak check these and then I'll put my caps back on and we'll be good to go. So I hope this video helped and if you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and troubleshooting, make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, our thousand question workbook, and also our quick reference cards all available over on Amazon and at our website at aecservicetech.com. We also have a bunch of free resources over on our website, such as our articles, our quick tips, our calculators and quizzes. So make sure you check all that out and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.